I'm cradle, I'm Russian, I was born in Russia, mm -hmm. and I am in favor of English in the churches, at least if it's like proper, like King James English. But the concern I sometimes have is that even a lot of converts sometimes feel like when the service is in English, it's like there's something inherently like watered down about it. They have that kind of subconscious sort of feeling. And so I have friends who are converts, but they still prefer it in Russian because they just like feel like it's better. It seems mystical. And, and th this is a cult of, of, of exoticism. Archbishop Peter of Chicago just put out a pastoral letter which, where he talked about, you know, exoticism. And he actually said that if we present the churches as something exotic, normal people will be, will be scared off and will attract unstable people. And I said, <laughs> well, orthodoxy attracts nuts. We really do. Every priest knows the kind of people who come out of the woodwork at Pascha. But it's part of this, this idea that the, the language has to be in Greek or, or Slavonic because it, it just, it sounds more mystical. I remember when I was at St. Vlad's, we had some World Council of Churches people visiting. They were saying, oh yes, we, we're in su such and such a country and they did Vespers and they were coming out of doors and going indoors and it just was all so meaningful. And I'm like, what does the word meaningful mean to you? How, how can it be, me you had no idea what was going on. How was it meaning? Well, it seemed mystical is what it was. And I think we have to, Yes, the language has to be proper liturgical English. And in the Diocese of the South, in Rokor, and in the Antiochian Archdiocese, you don't have a problem with that because uh, uh, we all use to one degree or another good high church English inspired by Cramner. The point is we have our own traditions. We have our own traditions of good liturgical English. But I understand this idea that people want to seem foreign. That, that's part of the appeal. Oh, I'm, I go to the Russian church. <laughs> you know, it, it's, you're fetishizing this stuff and it's a form of e exoticism. And I think the point is that at least in the South, we still have a culture where we know our past and we respect our elders and we respect the things of God, even if we don't understand them terribly well. And that's where we have a leg up on other parts of the country because we can still talk to, although this is becoming less and less true, by the way, my students, I've just seen this over the last 25 years, my students have become just biblically illiterate in the last two decades. And that's, that's a tragedy, but... Just a quick follow-up. Sure. I think there might be more to it than just exoticism. I think people naturally associate everything English or American with something profane rather than sacred. Like, um, for example, when I was little, I was also kind of, uh, I guess, prey to that. The church in our town was in English. There was a larger city a few hour drive away that we sometimes went to where the service was in Russian. And I remember one time going there and, and seeing that they made the majority of the service in English and the, like, the 12 year old me was thinking like, oh no, they're like not as loyal or faithful anymore because they're sort of degraded to English. That, that was how I was thinking. I, I don't think that now, but people tend to associate English and American things with like low culture, like McDonald's, football, that kind of like lo low things. My question would be like, how do you, how do you deprogram people from? Well, I think by, by exposing them to, to the high culture, because Western high culture, you know, stems from Christianity, all classical music, all this high culture. I'm a great supporter of David James' edition of the Coverdale Psalter, which I know a lot of Rocor parishes use. Holy Trinity publishes that. And he just basically took Miles Coverdale, which is prayer book, good prayer book English, and corrected it against the Septuagint. And it's, it's beautiful English, it's prayerful English, but it's also inherently part of our Anglo tradition. And that's something that we can embrace and say, look, this is, this is your tradition. This is part of your heritage, this beautiful English, this beautiful music. This is part of your tradition. And that's part of what it means to become indigenous Orthodox is to express that.